Welcome to the Wide World of Esports, a show devoted to all things esports. Uh, my guest today is Jamar Mate Hermoso, the CEO and founder of ELO Esports. Joining us from the Philippines, our topic is partnering with government in esports in the Philippines and beyond. Welcome, Jamar. Thanks, Catherine. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, thank you again for inviting us over and for me, well, for us to be able to share what we're doing here in uh, the Philippines. All right, I bet it's very early in the morning there. That's right. It's currently six a.m. in the morning, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, didn't uh, still haven't had my coffee, but I'm ready to just for sure this. <laughs> And uh, awesome. introduce what we're doing in Ilo Ilo. All right. So tell us about Ilo Esports. That's right. So Ilo Esports is one of the first government-backed esports organization. So in the world and industry of esports, it's everything is privately owned and it's uh, mostly uh, mostly w in partnership with brands and private entities. So. I thought, uh, why not create a esports organization, wherein I will partner up with my city government and be able to just share the uh, vastness and the uh, in, uh, esports scene with my city for me to be able to propagate and grow the grassroots level of esports here in uh, the region and hopefully uh, my end goal is to have other cities and uh, places in our country to have their own government backed esports organizations as well and for have it for this esports organization to have the same level of legitimacy and um, support uh, as, as with traditional sporting uh, as with traditional sports, I mean. So what is ELO Esports 2? Is it a team? So right now we are, uh, we're planning to create a team for three esport game, esport titles, particularly Mobile Legends, Bang Bang, uh, League of Legends, Wild Drift, and Valorant, the three biggest games here in our region. But uh, we're, uh, right now we have, or we're organizing events for our communities and what we're doing is that uh, we create platforms for our for the members of our community and the local esports enthusiasts to have a safe space to compete and hopefully uh make uh pursue their passion in esports and make it uh, as a career we and we did some workshops as well for streaming we also do a workshops for shoutcasting, and we'll have uh, soon later this uh, quarter we'll be doing a uh, workshop for uh, events organizing, so that we can have more uh, esports events here in our region. All right, you'll have to come to Hawaii and um, <laughs> team up with the um, with some of the local uh, esports uh, organizations here. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, uh, one of these days. All right. So, how did you how did you get the idea to connect with um, uh, city government? Yeah. So, uh, I'm a bit of uh, I actually started my esports career per se with organizing uh, League of Legends Wild Drift tournaments, and then uh, I just thought that. Since esports is considered as a, uh, as a sport here in the Philippines, since our Games and Amusement Board approved esports athletes around 2015, I believe. So I thought that why not uh, tap our local sports and youth department in our from our city to uh, provide resources, even just for uh, prizes. I mean, for prize pools during our tournaments. And after that, uh, I spoke with them and in hopes that I can make esports a legitimate department or a legitimate organization here in our region, create a an executive order 
uh, for the creation of an esports council in our city who will uh, administer and uh, administer and be able to oversee all esports activities and activations here in our city. It was signed last year by your mayor, so uh, the support and the platform that we're given is backed by our city government and it has been enacted to law due to the draft the executive order that i drafted terrific and did you have the connections to make that happen then or did you the funny the funny thing is uh is that i just sent them a message on facebook (laughs) and they (laughs) and they were good enough to uh reply back to me and after that uh that's where the connection started and I just uh, continued the ball rolling on that path and from them sponsoring our events to us partnering with esports activations here in our city, including having workshops, events, tournaments, and uh, other things related to the esports scene. Well, you know, that's kind of how I connect with government officials too, but it's on LinkedIn because they'll put, you know, there's certain, certain um you know senators and legislators who post on linkedin and it's a good way to kind of communicate with them um so that's kind of interesting that you did that on facebook um yeah Yeah, that's right actually uh in the philippines facebook is still the number one social media platform and uh everyone uh, yeah basically everyone is in it uh linkedin is still catching up and only those who are uh, serious and I believe that those who are uh, who want to connect in a global stage uh, uses. So that's why it was very effective in my end. But yeah, uh, uh, with regards to LinkedIn, I was happy that I was able to meet you there and we were able to uh, make this happen. So what is the government's interest in promoting esports? So with regards to uh, their interests, I think I've in my presentation to them, I mentioned how big the esport uh, and gaming industry is. It uh, being uh, the esports scene with more than viewers compared to the NFL and NBA. It having more participants compared to traditional sports. And uh, the gaming industry being 300 bil- uh, valued at over 300 billion, it was something that I believe caught their eye and caught their attention that this is something that we must invest in, we must support uh, so that our city might be one day uh, be recognized worldwide in the scene, uh, in the gaming and esports scene. So, uh, and not only that, uh, since uh, I started the organization during the pandemic. There were limited on-site uh, sporting events. So uh, in exchange, I mean, uh, while they're not available, you know, we were still capable of doing online events through esports and were able to connect our fellow citizens here through uh, gaming and uh, through tournaments that we have organized. So did um when did when did you start partnering partnering with the city what year So yeah uh, I just started uh, last year uh January last I uh, know Feb last year uh we start I started my events January I did the second batch of events uh in Feb and that time I reached out to the government to ask for a partnership Okay, so you're a pand you're a pandemic <laughs> uh, organization. Uh, That's right. Lot- yeah, I I mean I think that a lot of um, organizations and businesses started in the pandemic. Um, people are are probably um, using trying to be creative in terms of what they can do remotely, right? That's right. So since especially here in the Philippines, that it took longer to have the uh, establishments open, have uh, face-to-face events happen, then the only way for us to socialize and be able to connect with each other is through online, maybe through uh, social media platforms or through esports. Sure. And I think the Philippines is a bit like Hawaii because we were pretty slow in that. 
as well. You know? <laughs> I didn't know that about Hawaii, but yeah, uh, it was uh, compared to other countries, uh, we I think we just opened our face-to-face uh, events uh, earlier March or April this year. Sure, sure. So does the government provide financial um, assistance to um, ELO? Yes, uh, yes, they do. And uh, But uh, other than the financials, the main benefit that we get from them is having their uh, being in partner, be uh, tying tying in with them since it's a good way to market our organization. Uh, us being the first government back esports organization, so it's something that can make us connect with more brands or more local businesses and even uh non endemic uh private organizations to support what we're doing because what we're do- because our mission is really to grow uh esports through the uh, under the help of the government. Okay, so what what city are you in? So our city is called Iloilo. Uh, that's why we uh, also named the esports organization Ilo, uh, Ilo Esports. Okay, and um, can you explain like where Ilo Ilo is located within the Philippine Islands? Sure, uh, we're actually in the center of the Philippines. That's why we're often called the heart of the Philippines. And uh, one fact is that we are the city of love <laughs> here in the Philippines. So the uh, Filipinos uh, have this notion that we are the most caring and more loving uh, people, uh, citizens in this country. So yeah, uh, I think that's some of the facts here in the, in the some facts about Iloilo. We also have great beaches here i know it's not nothing compared to that of hawaii but we also have awesome beaches here <laughs> oh terrific um so have you heard after you partnered with your government um did you hear of others uh, other um organizations partnering with their governments as well or did you start a trend or is it still building still building but i got messages from other esports uh enthusiasts all over the country who wanted to uh follow what i started and uh replicate what i did especially in terms of having government support and actually um i'm next year i'm planning to start the a national level league where in ilo, ilo esports can compete with esports organizations from other major cities and municipalities here in the Philippines. So uh, it's still a work in project, but nonetheless, it's something that I look forward to. What lessons have you learned from this partnership? Uh, pro- number one probably is the, the impact of having a legitimate, uh, of having the government as a partner because it makes your initiatives more legitimate <laughs> and it uh, adds more value to what you're doing especially that uh, it will definitely give you give uh, your organization a little shine a different light to your organization especially when it comes to having to connect with private entities and telling them that we're backed by our own government and it really drives the message to them that this is something that we're not doing just for fun, but what we're uh, but it's something that we're doing for the betterment of not of not only of our city but of the uh, people from our city, especially those who are into esports and gaming. Especially since that the industry uh, is worth several billion dollars. Hopefully, we can bring back. Uh, what they have invested and be able to be recognized as uh, an esports hub in the an esports hub in Southeast Asia. Sure. So this is a real win-win for not only uh, you, uh, the government, the people in your community, and I would think anyone who uh, provides sponsorship or 
uh, partners with you. Is that correct? That's right. So not only that, they will receive recognition with our community. They will also have a good standing with the government. Sure, sure. Yeah, I, you know, I would think that it is a bit challenging for um, uh, esports organizations in their infancy um, to have that legitimacy. And I would think that this, because a lot of the gamers are young, that they appreciate that um, governmental stamp of approval so that they can tell their parents that, you know, our government says it's okay that I game. Um, so you should too. Definitely. I couldn't have said it better. That stamp of approval from a governing body is something that uh, we can use to really make uh, what we're doing more official and really uh, uplift and promote what we're doing as something that can be beneficial to those participating in it. So, so all over the world, you know, esports is really taking hold. And, you know, we know that places like um, South Korea are really big and, you know, the United States has grown and Europe has grown. How does the Philippines compare to other places in the world in terms of their growth in esports? Yeah, uh, we actually had some World Championships, uh, won by Filipino teams, especially in our in the most famous game uh, here in uh, the country, which is Mobile Legends Bang Bang. We're back to back world champions in Call of Duty Mobile. Uh, Philippines also has a winning team. And with regards to organizations, one of the most famous and uh, the more established ones are getting noticed worldwide, even getting bigger numbers than uh, esport organizations from the US or Europe. So we're growing, and uh, especially in the handheld scene, uh, the mobile esports scene is growing by the year, and the Philippines is one of the top players in that uh, category. Sure. And, you know, that was one of my next questions was mobile. Um, I understand that like South America, Asia are really big in mobile esports. Are it sounds like like your esports is more uh, mobile rather than um, PC and console. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah, uh, I believe PC is a bit more harder. Uh, uh, harder. Uh, what do you call this? It's a yeah, uh, we have more handheld gamers, especially mobile gamers here in the Philippines because um, getting a PC here in the Philippines is more expensive than just getting a handheld phone. And um, the computer shops or the PC shops or the PC banks, uh, as what they call in Korea, are famous here. But since because of the pandemic, uh, their operations have stopped. So the PC gamers transition into mobile gaming mm, okay sure and in in the philippines are um is esports moving into schools at every level or is, you know how is that going yeah um i'm actually lucky to have uh we're actually lucky to have akat arena it's uh a, a startup for a it's a collegiate esports startup that got seed funded uh, for three million dollars earlier uh, later last year late last year and what they're doing is that they uh, have created a platform for college esport players to have a uh, way to compete with each other in a more organized way and they've actually have expanded to Southeast Asia and just Late, earlier this month uh, to Brazil. So they're pushing uh, collegiate esports worldwide. So, and and fun fact is that their founder and CEO is also from Iloilo. Oh, <laughs> that's terrific. All right. So what advice would you give to people in other countries who um, here who watch this and they think, oh, maybe we could 
partner with our government. Yeah, so the main thing is that they just need to create a pitch that and a presentation that can make uh, the, the government officials see how beneficial esports and gaming can be and um, make it in a way that it can help their grassroots community grow and hopefully with those uh, two you can follow and replicate what we're doing as well sure um so what did you have any roadblocks in your journey to um create your um elo esports and to partner with the government um not much of a roadblock but it was a longer journey journey than I expected uh, because I had to, since it's the government, I had to speak to a lot of people just to push our agenda. So we had to lobby and uh, it was a long process, but nonetheless, uh, we don't see, I don't see anything that's blocking our way to being more established and stabilize our organization. And what is the future for you? In, in... Yeah, so, if, oh, sorry? What's the future of ELO? So yeah, we're planning to create our own ELO esports team for Mobile Legends Bang Bang, uh, League of Legends Wild Rift, and Valorant. So uh, we're not only, so we're not only organized tournaments but we'll send in teams coming from our city to different tournaments and uh, promote what we're doing here so in, in that way we can have our players become our brand ambassadors become ambassadors and advocates of our city and in a way uh, it's also uh, for them to uh, be discovered uh, in the bigger esports scene especially since uh, us here in Iloilo are not really lucky to and fortunate to be given a uh, spotlight because most of the uh, pro players, pro esport players that we have came from Manila, the, the capital of the Philippines. And uh, for Ilu esports, uh, we're continually growing. And we'll, aside from the those that you mentioned, uh, hopefully, we'll be able to open more departments uh, with other esport games, including uh, other uh, titles like Call of Duty Mobile and uh, League of Legends PC, since I, I think it was the fourth and fifth most popular games here in our region. Sure. All right. Um, so, uh, how can people find you if they're interested in connecting? Yeah, so they can check out uh, facebook.com slash Ilo Esports. It's where uh, we announce our projects. Right now, we're in hiatus, but we're planning to conduct a weekly tournament uh, start, uh, starting uh, October. So we were blessed to partner with Community Gaming, who will be providing a $200 per week prize pool. So we're doing a Ilo Ilo versus the world. So it will be Ilo Ilo teams versus uh, organizations outside our city. And uh, after that, uh, yeah, I think uh, we will have two on-site mall conventions where we will invite cosplay and hobbyists from our city to gather and have a uh by monthly gathering of like-minded people. So just think about it. In in the half hour here, you've very much promoted your city. You've told us all about Elo Elo, and people who watch will be interested in going to the city of love and going to your beautiful beaches. So um, I definitely think that this is a great partnership with you and your government. So anyway, Jamar, thank you so much for telling us all about it. Appreciate you you being our guest. No, uh, thank you guys for inviting me. And yeah, I couldn't have promoted my CP and the things that we do at Ilo Esports without your 
invitation here. So once again, uh, I appreciate you for appreciate being. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting me here, and I look forward to more uh, esports organization partnering with their local governments so that we can revolutionize the esports scene worldwide. Fantastic. All right. And thank you to our viewers for joining us today. In two weeks, my guest will be Nick Turner joining us from the UK. See you then. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.